How far in terms of accuracy is HR tracking from a smart band as compared to a chest heart rate monitor? We're putting some of the best fitness trackers and smartwatches against the Wellu Visual Beats. Let's inspect. Alright, welcome TechRo channel. My name is Michael and I'm so happy to see you on the channel. And today we're going to cover one of these topics uh, about questions that probably everybody's wondering about, but we barely get a definite answer whether a chest-based HR tracker like this one, you know, you put it on the chest and you go outdoors and do some sports, is more accurate than some of the best fitness trackers uh, like this buddy, the Galaxy Fit 2 or a smartwatch. This is the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro, something that I have been favoring a lot in the past months, but a lot of you believe that its HR sensor is way off the reality. So which one is more accurate? I've chosen a few really good tested scenarios so that you can figure out which one of all these is actually better. So first, let me explain how both technologies work. As a smartwatch or fitness band with premium design, we're choosing some of the most beautiful and well-built devices for the last year, perfect way to start tracking your health vitals. Now, in 2021, most smartwatches are catching up with features like sleep, stress, SpO2 and even temperature tracking, since the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro and Samsung Galaxy Fit 2 both run a basic operating system. You cannot connect any external monitor to them, similar to most fitness trackers. So apparently to track health, especially HR during sports, there's a wide budget range of wearables, starting from $30 for the cheapest good trackers, going up to $300 and even more dollars for more premium and capable smartwatches. The big difference is that the more advanced the OS, the better the features since there are a lot of options for connecting external HR tracking devices. A chest-mounted ECG heart rate monitor can be a lot more advanced. In this video, I'm going to test the new visual beat, which was sent to me by the company manufacturer Wellu. And besides checking its features, we'll use it as a comparison baseline. It's supposed to be a lot more accurate in terms of HR tracking. I chose it because it has quite a unique design, has a developed smartphone application and also can be used with a smartwatch. But it's not officially medically certified, thus the affordable price of $65 and taking all of the results with a pinch of salt. Since most of you probably haven't really used before any chest mounted uh, HR trackers, well, th this is how this body looks like. Uh, it's, it's really small, a bit larger than the scale of a fitness tracker and it could be really convenient the nice part about this is that it has, first of all, a chest-based mount, but also you can use these little pads, which uh, can easily be attached, and then you can stick them to your chest. There are some caveats, though, because well, it really depends on the body and whether it's a hairy body or not, and I'll mention about this in a moment. Uh, th this one in particular is uh, really good because of the second mounting option, which is the closest to wearing nothing and uh, such kind of attachments and patches they use during surgeries and similar procedures. The major difference with the measuring approach is the sensor setup inside. As opposed to fitness trackers like the Galaxy Fit 2, the Mi Band series and so on, the visual beat is based on electrocardiography and it measures the signals by the HR activity. You will notice in a moment that it's going way beyond just HR measuring and can give you some more data about your heart's performance. The other great feature of such devices is that they may be connected to certain smartwatches or fitness bands. Most commonly, there are two protocols used, either Bluetooth or ANT+. So, if you're looking to buy an external chest monitor to be used with your smartwatch, you have to double-check first whether such a feature is supported. Most of the wearables with basic OS, like the two tested here, do not support it, and they don't have ANT Plus either. While both devices have Bluetooth inbuilt, there is no way to connect such kind of an external device. However, most sports-oriented watches do support ANT Plus. It's another wireless protocol, a lot simpler and allows exchanging information between nearby devices wirelessly. Most Garmin smartwatches, for instance, support ANT+. I easily connected the Visual Beat monitor to the good old Vivo Active 3. The big advantage of having paired together with the smartwatch is, of course, the fact that all the data collected throughout the workout session will be based on much more accurate HR data. One disadvantage with the Vivo Active, it only shows HR measuring during workouts. 
since now you know what we're doing and what we're talking about, I'm going to start showing you graphs. And we're going to start with the first couple of activities where I've measured them simultaneously. On one side, we have the results from the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro, and we're going to use the smartphone app. And also, we're going to capture the data from the smartphone app from the Wellu Visual Beat. And now, looking at them side by side, I think at this point, the graph could probably silence some of the Huawei's critics, because you can see that the spikes and the sudden decreases of the HR are quite in sync, with minor exceptions in some areas, the average heart rate detected by the smartwatch is 92 beats per minute, while the average as detected by the uh, chest mount is 98. It's about 6% difference. And I think this is a tolerable amount that we can, we can say it's probably something we could easily ignore. Now, the next part of the comparison is about the pace. And over here, we can be absolutely certain about the data of the GT2 Pro because it's based on GPS. And it looks like the chest traps accelerometer is also very accurate. The only significant difference is the maximum heart rate. 107 is what is detected by the watch. 120 by the chest monitor. From all the data here, we know for sure that the pace measured by the GPS is accurate, meaning that the visual beat by Wellu is properly detecting movements. The other thing that is now slightly undermined is the ability for the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro to properly measure the spikes and its maximum values. So the maximum heart rate is now deviating by how many? 13 bits per minute, which is significantly more. For the second part of the measurement, I've used the visual beat and I've put it side by side with the Galaxy Fit 2 and the Watch GT2 Pro. So we included a fitness tracker. And now, because I started to have doubts, with the Huawei watch about the spikes and whether it's capable of measuring them, I really wanted to stress my body so that the pulse goes rapidly high and to find out which of these devices is going to handle this deviation a bit better. And the results are pretty interesting. The visual beat chest mount was good, however it did not recall the activity from the start. The first minute is completely missing, the Huawei watch GT2 Pro has the curve right, but there's close to 30 beats per minute off the maximum that I achieved, and that's in my opinion the biggest disappointment. The Galaxy Fit 2 on the other hand has performed the best, having recording the whole event and showing very accurate HR. Disadvantage, the graph inside the app is just weird, having these flattened curves. Obviously I couldn't compare these results to the Polar H10, which I have, it's not around me right now. Uh, but, now if we have to sum things up, I think I'm the most happy with the Galaxy Fit 2 tracker. It's, it's been performing amazing ever since. Then I can highlight the good operation of the Visual Beats device. It's not bad. Some remarks about the smartphone app, and I really hate the fact that it, it missed the first minute of the exercise, which was the most sudden spike. And the major problem is that I'm deeply disappointed with the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro. It's a smartwatch I've been rooting for for such a long time, and now it turns out that in terms of heart rate, especially when it goes beyond the usual maximums, it's not trustworthy at all. In terms of usability, all the three devices have their strengths, with the Galaxy Fit 2 being really small and convenient, the Watch GT2 Pro being absolutely stylish and still very comfortable despite its large size, and I can say only good words about the visual beat. It looks accurate, it looks easy to use, and the chest mounting is fantastic, but I truly liked the electrode patches. That doesn't make them perfect, because in some conditions they're great, in other conditions it could be rather problematic. Viewer's discretion is advised, so when these patches had to be removed, I ended up suffering with this, and I can tell you, that was painful. Well, that was interesting and in some ways unexpected. I, I didn't really expect the Watch GT2 Pro to disappoint me that much. So I, I guess from now on, one of the major rules when testing heart rate accuracy for smartwatches, that's gonna happen versus proper chest mounts. Now, uh, concerning the rock star of today's episode, the Visual Beat device, I think it's good, has very good ideas, however its major problem is the smartphone app, which has pretty bad interface, doesn't even support landscape mode, 
and I think the data could have been brought in a much better to read format. But even like that, uh, I think it's pretty useful and uh, could be a very good alternative to more expensive solutions coming from Garmin or Polar or other vendors. And that's everything I wanted to talk about during this episode. Of course, if you have more requests or ideas or comments, there's a section down below in the video. Each one of the test units and uh, the devices that I have shown throughout the episode are going to be linked in the description below. My name is Michael. That's the Tech for All channel. Would be much appreciated if you subscribe because that gives us power to create more content. Wish you a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.